I want to bring in former United States Senator Mike Gravel. He represented Alaska from 1969 to 1980. He's best known for having been given the Pentagon Papers by Daniel Ellsberg, who's been on this vigil one time, at least one time before Dan has, because Dan went to the press, and of course the government stopped in prior restraint, ultimately, the press from continuing to publish. So he went to a few senators, like George McGovern, who was running for president and didn't want anything to do with it, and a couple of other less courageous senators. And then he found Mike Ravel, who was willing to do it. And Mike read the papers into the congressional record during a subcommittee hearing. And the next day was the Supreme Court decision, actually, the very next morning, in which the court ruled that the Times and the Post were right that they cannot be stopped prior to publication. It cannot be prior restraint. But the majority of the judges said that after publication of classified information, they are liable to be arrested. And that's key to the Assange case, because under the Espionage Act, technically, it's a horrific act, but technically they could get him just for the possession and dissemination of the documents. I was literally a top secret control officer. I could classify and declassify. And I was 24 years old, and green is all get out. And so now you advance it. To, I'm a U.S. senator, and I'm going on 42 years old, and all I can do is go into a room under guard and read the Pentagon Papers, and I couldn't take notes, and obviously no staff. This was ridiculous in my mind, uh, terrible. And so when Dan called my office and spoke to me, would I be willing to use it in my filibuster, because I was filibustering the draft at the time, and in a second I said, yes. <laughs> please hang up because I wasn't sure if he was being tailed or I was being tailed. So we did. We met subsequently, and and uh, in his movie, The Most Dangerous Man in America, that they go through in some detail <laughs> about what had happened between Dan and myself and the transfer of the documents. You remind me of that first phone call. I remember the words I think that uh, I used when I talked to you which were, uh, Senator, is it true that you're planning to filibuster, uh, which was going to keep the draft postponed, at least as long as he filibustered, couldn't pass it. A renewal of the draft, wasn't that it? A reinstitution? It was renewed uh, in September when they broke my filibuster because uh, Mansfield wanted to let John Stennis uh, save face and Nixon save face. So Nixon agreed to let the draft expire two years hence, which was 73. When 73 rolled around, I was still there. And, and John Stennis, being quite the honorable person, he held to the agreement that the draft would expire. So when I always say that I was instrumental in ending the draft, and, and that's the terminology that I use, instrumental, because they wouldn't let me get credit. And of course, Nixon got credit. But great about Nixon, in one of the books he wrote to try and rejuvenate himself before the American people, he wrote a paragraph saying that the worst mistake I ever made was agreeing to end the draft. <laughs> I enjoyed that. <laughs> I was impressed that this senator, whom I didn't know, I'd read that he was going to filibuster. I had actually tested a couple people on uh, main names here, including Gray Lord Nelson, who had uh, voted against appropriations a few times uh, in connection with the war and had raised questions about it. Uh, I was kind of testing him whether he was a person to go with the Pentagon Papers. And I tried one thing after another. He brushed them all off. Uh, might he filibuster against the war? Might he do this and that? And he seemed pretty burnt out to me at that point. This was in the, back in 1969. Dan, Dan, let me add something there that could be helpful to you. The Gaylord was one of the advisors of McGovern. Gaylord is the one that advised McGovern don't do this. This will destroy your chances of becoming president. So I just I want that. to... Listen, with Nelson, I got so disgusted with him finally, and I was going to see uh, McGovern later. So at the end, I got up and I said, uh, Senator Nelson, you've done a lot on the war. You criticized it. There were times in my career when I wish I had done more than I did. And I hope, Senator, you don't finish your career feeling that you had not done more than you actually done. I left him in some, I, I wasn't in a good mood. And I went to see, see McGovern, and McGovern said he was going to use the Pentagon Papers. He had a very different attitude. And I went through the whole thing with him. But he said, give me a week to think about it. And at the end of that week, he did say he couldn't do it after all. 
And later when I asked him, I said, do you mind if we come and discuss at some point? I went in to see him maybe a few weeks later <clears throat> when I was in town. And he said that he had discussed this with a friend, his closest confidant, what you just said, and uh, who had advised him that he shouldn't do it. And he guessed, he asked if it, it was your name. Uh, McGovern had earlier said nothing could compel him to uh, reveal my name. You know, he showed the Constitution he, speech clause, isn't it, that he can't be questioned about anything he said on the floor of Congress. He said, they can't even question me. They can't make me tell your name, whatever. And so uh, he said, I did, however, tell a friend. And he asked me, was that Dan Ellsbury? And I said, was that Gaylord Nelson? And <laughs> he had guessed from my little exchange with him that I was the bad guy who uh, was trying to get him into uh, bad waters there. And I didn't hold that against McGovern because he was running for president at that point. And I had said to him earlier that I knew it was very questionable uh, for him to run for president, having put these out. And he said, you know, you know, uh, my source of funding is different from these other guys. And the people who back me won't be bothered by it, he said. But a week later with Gaylord Nelson, he had changed his mind. So uh, here is this guy, Gravel, now, who is going to do a uh, stick his neck out. And by the way, a very good guy that I dealt with earlier, Senator Goodell, who had called for us to get out of Vietnam in one year and cut the fund off. He didn't. He couldn't get at first one co-sponsor to go with him. But when I raised the question later to him of a filibuster, he said, Dan, if I could get people to join me, I'd do it. He said, but if you do it as one person, you're going to look ridiculous. And in this job, you cannot afford to look ridiculous. So here was a Senator Gravel who was willing to look ridiculous if necessary, you know, or all, all by himself. He wasn't asking anybody else to join. So I said, is it true you're going to do this? And you said, yes, I am going to do it. I said, well, if you really want to read stuff, I can give you enough to read till Christmas. It will keep you busy till Christmas. And, and mind you, I'm dyslexic. So, so it would have been... <laughs> Actually, a lot more than that. It's uh, it's tough reading, as you found when you were reading it into the record. <clears throat> Hard to read it. It was so terrible. In fact, I remember the point that where you really gave up, where you said, we are sending people over there to die and to kill for a government of drug dealers, uh, you know, and, and pushers, basically, which was exactly right. And very hard to say. The papers prove that for 20 years, we have been victims of our Southeast Asia policy. I was frightened to death over releasing the Pentagon Papers. I had no idea whether I was going to prison. All I could think of was, my country is killing people, we're maiming Americans, and this is terrible. And so I, I was overcome with emotion, not, not patriotism, just emotion of something you love dearly that has gone astray. He continued until exhaustion and emotion overcame him after one o'clock this morning. I collected myself and I asked, now keep in mind, I'm the only one on the committee. I asked unanimous consent to put all of these papers into the record and I've got the gavel and I slam it and I say, hearing no objection, so ordered, that's it, papers are out. They're in the Senate record. Even if the FBI had wanted to arrest him outside the courthouse this morning, they probably couldn't have done it. Ellsberg was walled off by newsmen and supporters as he admitted that he was indeed the man who brought the Pentagon Papers to the press and congressional leaders. I did this clearly at my own jeopardy, and I am prepared to answer to all the consequences of these decisions. Dr. Ellsberg, you have any concern about the possibility of having a prison for this? Wouldn't you go to prison to tell Sunday's war?